their photo sensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. A box. There could be anything in there. Why are you hiding? Oh my god! I thought it was gonna scare me more. Are those butterflies? Dang. Or clove, huh? That's right, folks. Clove is ready to make their debut on stage, and the timing couldn't be better. We're ready to kick off five straight days of matches. Hello, folks, and welcome back to day one of the VCT America Super Week. We're coming to you hot and live from the Los Riot Games studio here in Los Angeles, California. I'm Uber here. I'm on the desk today with Ender, Mimi, Athena. How are feeling? Clove makes their debut, makes their landing in VCT. It's going to be so exciting. I think a lot of our teams here are our teams that people have been expecting. We can see in our very first match, maybe Tens playing the agent. It's going to be super exciting. Yeah, I'm just excited to see how this switches up everything. I feel like Clove can be a multitude of things, and I'm just excited to see how it goes in play. But also, like, how many teams have had time to practice with uh -huh. Clove in scrims, right? Because this is yeah. coming in the middle of the season, week three, right here as well. So we might see teams maybe come in on some of their first reps of Clove if they want to play it. And this is the week where we're really going to start to get the playoff picture in order of the teams who are expected to make it. So a changeup coming right before this critical juncture could really switch things up for our team. We had teams in Madrid as well working on that patch, of course, maybe with less time to sit, watch tape and prepare to bring Clove into their lineups. We've got 10 matches over the next five days and a lot is at stake for our teams. Let's have a little listen to see what some of the pros had to say about what Super Week means for them. Super week. Uh, we got to play two matches in one week. Um, usually it's one, but this time it's two. It's gonna be more difficult because you have less preparation for both teams. You know, gotta grind it out on that week. And you know, it's just a little less preparation. Luckily for our team, we kind of just always play our own game and don't really think too much about them. So it's not the biggest thing for us to, to think about. We should be fine. The closest thing to Super Week for us was honestly kickoff, just because a lot of games were like back to back or close to each other. So we kind of got a bit of exposure um, to a close format like that at the beginning of the year. Creo que la Super Week o sea va a ser cansadora. Creo que va a ser el momento clave de la liga para todos los equipos para I think the teams that do good preparation will do well in that week. Después de que estamos entrenando demasiado fuerte, eh, sabemos el nivel que tenemos, les acabamos de ganar a los campeones. We have Oxy, so we don't have to think that much other than that. Confiante no nosso trabalho, a gente teve bastante tempo aí, tipo, off, né, sem jogar campeonato para poder se preparar. Eu sinto que a gente chega preparado, é só acertar alguns detalhes mesmo para poder se provar. Estamos preparados como equipa, venimos entrenando super bien, venimos super bien y es solo seguir manteniendo el ritmo y mejorando unos pequeños errores y, y se nos va a dar bien yo creo en el Super Week. Me and I know my team, we love just competing, so having like matches close to each other is going to be such like a, a week of fire, like we got to prepare for this, you know, we got two big matches coming up. Most teams can pretty much lose to any team. I think a lot of people say that like the bottom six teams can't beat the top two teams and stuff like that. I don't think that's true. Lev, which is a team that beats Sen, right? Like I think anyone can really beat anyone still. All right, so now we've set the stage for this oncoming Super Week. Let's have a look at our current standings because the Omega Group has taken an utter shellacking in the first two weeks. Here's how it all plays out, of course. Leviathan, a bright spot for them, of course. We're very impressed with what they were able to do against that Sentinels roster, but in general, it's looking a little rough out there. Yeah, the Alpha teams are preying on the downfall of everyone in Omega, hoping that three teams don't get those two wins. Because if it, if it sticks with Omega getting slapped the whole season, that means that the Alpha teams get that extra spot. And right. that group, I think, is incredibly stacked when you compare it with the competition in Group Omega. Yeah, to, to just clarify, it is you must get at least two wins in your group in order to have a chance of qualifying for playoffs. If you don't, you're done. So...
Yeah, I feel like this is kind of like a pivotal moment. And you kind of mentioned this earlier, but also looking at it when you're on that team, seeing that perspective of like, okay, um, are we going to be able to push past this obstacle? Are we going to be able to be able to make it to playoffs. I feel like having that momentum towards that is really important. And going 0-2 at the very start is going to be a little bit of a momentum downer. But you heard the players mention it in that video. This is something that these teams are accustomed to. It's a lot more similar to that kickoff format that we had early on where you're playing back-to-back matches. You know a team like Sentinels is going to be ready for that after their tough run at Madrid. But it is definitely very different than the normal week-by-week play. Yeah, and even Rooney kind of saying, wow, we we kind of don't really think about it at this point. We've got games to play. I love not thinking. (laughs) That's That's my favorite thing. (laughs) <laughs> Very true. I mean, it's, they do all the thinking for Roxy, and even that is not that much, apparently. But here's what is coming up today. We're starting Super Week off with Sentinels versus MIBR. And, of course, as we just mentioned, later it's Cloud9 taking on Loud. And let's shift our focus a little bit to the context around some of these games here. We've talked about how important they are. They are pivotal in this Super Week. There's a lot to get through. You don't want to be sleeping this week and come out the other side wondering what the heck went wrong We're currently on patch 8.07, though. And the big headline is that Clove is now playable on stage. So let's get a bit of an idea of what our players think of Valorant's new death-defying agent. Eh, Well, the way I would play Clove would be full W. Definitely won't be meta-changing, but I think Clove will be played a lot. I think Clove is going to be very good for the controller players that like our low-key duelist players. Eu tinha ouvido que Clove é um agente não binário, então eu acredito que representa bem a palavra diversidade, já que ali na função de controlador tem um jeito mais agressivo. The movement you get, like when you use the C, gives you like a stim overheal. You get the movement speed as well. Like you don't have to look at the body to press the ability, so it's like it'll give you that edge of when you want to peek again. Even the explosive decay, like bomb thing, is insane. Like it just instantly does 90 damage. So. Entering with that piece of utility is very strong. I think it's difficult to adapt to the teams because I tried it, and for example, their ranges of humo are a little bit short, so I couldn't replace it in some maps with a humo of omen, a humo of astra, which covers the whole map. But for new compositions where there can be two humo, I think it's very good. You can play many games aggressive, for more that you have the function of the controller, you can get revenge and then after you've died. Yeah, you can get smoke and then after you've died, you can get revenge and then after you've died, you can get revenge and then after you've died, you can get revenge and then after you've died, you can get revenge and then after you've died, you can The ultimate is not dead yet, where if you die, you have a small, short time to activate it, come back to life, get your revenge, come back into the game and start fragging again. I would say the biggest weakness that Clove will have in pro play is they don't have a lot of utility for their teammates. The Omen has Paranoia, Brimstone has Molly, Stim Beacon. They don't really have anything that helps set up their teammates, and I think that's going to be something that limits them in the pro setting. Vai ter uma mudança no meta em vários mapas. Provavelmente vão usar no lugar do Omen ou da Astra. Então, provavelmente vai rolar uma mudança em várias composições porque Clove é bem forte. When you get a kill and you use the speed boost, if you have Brimstone also throw a stem on the floor, you're like faster than Neon with your gun out. So you're literally just flying across the map. So make sure you lock Clove and Brimstone in your ranked games and try that out. I do think the addition of Clove has made uh, Valorant all really fun for me uh, recently just because I've been learning the new character and being able to just experiment with everything is really fun. And I think Clove in general is a really fun character. Now, we got to hear Valen mention it briefly, Mimi, but you still think that the speed buff from Pick Me Up is actually kind of slept on by many still. Yeah, I, th- I think it's sick. I've been exclusively playing Clove in my ranking since they came out because I'm the problem. Um, <laughs> and every time you get a kill, you can disrupt timings like crazy with that ability. And I think like the players are saying, for people who already play a very aggressive controller style, yeah. like Tens there, if you kind of have the agency to int, it'll unlock some crazy potentials because you have to think about the game in a very different way way that dying means so much less when you're playing clove yeah i mean i literally was thinking about it in terms of the play styles for all of these teams they can genuinely switch up their play style and change up the whole meta to just be this kind of like yolo hold w swag kind of team where their controller it literally doesn't matter if they die exactly like you said but again i do want to touch up a little bit on the cons which is just like Kind of mentioned in that in that preview that Clove doesn't have that much util for their team. Some defined weaknesses. Yeah, right? I, I think the biggest thing for me is if you're replacing them with Omen in a comp, you're losing your line control mm-hmm. ability, which is one of the big reasons that Omen gets so much play. That paranoia is super powerful, and you lose out that support of util like Vanity was talking about. Also, it's harder to lurk, right? You can't sort of set up smokes across yeah, the, the map. Yeah, the radius is very small. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. I mean, so I mean, the, the low hanging fruit here is, you know, obviously tens. There are probably a, quite a few players that we hope at least are going to pick up Clove, but we'll table that for now and jump into today's first match. Of course, let's talk Sentinels. They get 2 0 by Leviathan. Everyone is pretty shocked. Aspas over the course of that series is 68 kills. He breaks a kill record on Lotus. It is a marathon of a match. What happened here for Sentinels? Kaplan was not pleased with his squad. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Sentinels, at the beginning, it looked like they were just losing, like, these small little mistakes that caused them to lose these rounds. But it also felt like a really big mixture between Lev just absolutely domi dominating. I feel like Aspas had such a big impact that we cannot overlook it. A lot of people say that when it comes to these duelists, these fraggers, you can't just kind of plan a whole team around them. But at the same time, I think Sentinels, just small mistakes, was what they picked up on really fast. Absolutely, and, and I think as well for Leviathan, they were playing to a level that we haven't seen mm -hmm. from the team yet, right? Osbos was ridiculous. I think they had some great reads on their attacking side in particular. That first half for Lotus wasn't even just Osbos dominating. It was some really good mid-round plays, and they were playing forward, disrupting these Sentinels retakes. They they really just got off on the wrong foot, and it was such a tough game to recover when you're against yeah. such a hot player like Osbos. Yeah, the thing I genuinely wonder, though, too, is if Lev watched these VODs and pinpointed those weaknesses and kind of put their kind of aggressive stances more towards it because that's a really big thing when it comes to pro play is watching these VODs making yeah. sure that they can kind of see exactly what they can abuse and Sentinels kind of letting off the gas a little bit I think that I mean, we heard from Kaplan. He said, I think our Lotus is getting a bit readable. Yeah. We're going to have to go back and come up with something a little bit new. But after the loss, Sentinel's social media decided to honour the bet. They made a bet with Leviathan, of course, around this game. Sentinel's incredible sales, people. But a bet is a bet. Now they're shilling the Leviathan butter, which kind of speaks for itself, I'd <laughs> like to think. But nice to see them get involved with marketing for a rival team. I, I mean, this is a Josh Wilkinson classic. Unable to give a compliment <laughs> without backhand. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you should definitely buy this bundle. Also, it's because you have one player who carried the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> I expect nothing less uh, from Sentinels. I mean, no, uh, nothing though. I mean, there was a loss here and we know all the Sentinels fans, they often uh, have a lot to say and the social media kind of blew up after this. Nothing really gets people going on social media like a big Sentinels L. And a lot of re these reactions again are, you know, like people quite surprised, right? About, you know, I think we all were too. Yes. I want to say... Sentinels fans, this is the exception. Make Rob Moore put away the paper shredder. We're not making any changes. My hope is that this is a good thing for Sentinels because when you've when you've won a tournament, when you're on top of the world, I think it can sometimes be hard to remember how close all the teams are. And I'm not saying they've gotten complacent. I'm just saying a win like this, it'll light a fire under your ass. You're going to go out there. You are going to focus so much harder on yeah. fixing all those little details that might not have been exposed unless you lost this game. In the grand scheme of the season, that match, obviously a win's a win, but Sentinels is going to likely make playoffs anyways. I think this is a great learning opportunity for them to really focus now that we're about halfway through the stage. Yeah, I mean, and with Clove coming out, it could be a complete kind of utter fire, like sure. you said, under them to kind of change up their meta, to kind of change up their play style a little bit because now they know that all these teams have been watching them. They were so successful, and now they're going to change maybe hopefully a little bit up. Maybe we do see tens on that. I mean, the workload is serious for this team because, again, they might want to go and revolutionize some of their approaches to maps. They've also got to tighten up the issues that they had with Leviathan. And Coach Kaplan, the one who will be leading that charge, did not mess around when we spoke to him about the state of things after that map one, that Lotus loss. Check this out. Yeah, we just got to look at why did we lose that map. Number one, we just didn't care for a half and that's not okay. So we basically played without a half. And then number two, I think uh, our Lotus is catching up to us a bit. We were a bit readable, especially on defense. Need to mix things up for the future. So looking at Icebox, number one, we're already awake. We're not gonna make that mistake again in a half. And two, we really worked on it this week. We're gonna show some different stuff and uh, basically just, hey, the reasons we lost that aren't gonna be reasons we lose this game. They're just not in the picture for Icebox and run it back. Obviously, pretty shocking to see Sentinels find three rounds on defense. So much fighting over mound as well, over that C site. They really couldn't find any edges. But in that match, there wasn't one single player underperforming necessarily. The entire team went negative. And this is over quite a long game run. Let's have a look at these stats here. I think John QT looked fantastic in multiple clutch moments here, but some of the usual suspects were off the boil for the Sentinels. Yeah, in that, in that overtime, John was ridiculous. He's the only reason that it really made it to overtime, that that match stayed so close. It's a testament to the individuals that 
that happened. But across the board, yeah, they were getting rolled. You mentioned that that like mountain control they kept going for. It was those Leviathan constant late round reclears with Osmos being set up incredibly well. They was just running Sen over, and they were so much slower to adapt to come up with that new plan on the mm -hmm. defense compared to what we're used to from this team. I mean, it kind of touches up on what you said as well about Leviathan kind of playing a whole new game that we haven't seen before. And I think that that was so, so good to watch because that level of aggression is what we normally see out of Sentinels. And so it kind of like flipped the switch onto them. Sure. And their reaction was kind of like, yeah, they went to OT. Yeah, it's kind of close. Yeah, monkey together strong, you know? <laughs> like, I'm sure that's but... exactly what they were saying, though, Carl. <laughs> we're made together strong. I mean, all right, Sin City, you've had your stern talking to. I think you guys know what maybe needs to change coming into this game. But we need to talk about their opponents. MIBR do not have an easy road ahead of them. I mean, this is brutal uh, for a team in their position. They're going to go up against a lot of these matchups. This is what it takes, by the way, to beat Sentinels. Aspas going absolutely hog wild. Who do MIBR have they can lean on? to pull this off, or does it have to be something completely different? I don't think they have a player who can do this. Osboss is a top three player, not just in DCD Americas, but in the world. For MIBR, they have players who will have moments. RGL is good in the clutch. Sometimes FRZ will step up and have a game or two, but they pound for pounds. I don't think have a superstar that on paper you're putting above their opponent on Sentinels. Do yeah. they need one? Yeah. <laughs> because this team specifically, they've been really good at being like a stable rock all around each other. But you need to have that star player. The reason why is because when you want to win games, you have to play to win. And that means taking these risks that necessarily the other team won't expect or taking aggressive peaks that you cannot be afraid to lose. And it felt like at a certain point, they just couldn't set up for that. Properly. That's exactly it for me. MIBR is a team that is very safe. I mm -hmm. think it's the best way to describe it. They're playing for their trades. They're setting each other up well. But they're also not taking those yep. risks that you're saying they need to. On top of that, they're playing very old comps. Sentinels is one of the teams leading the meta right now with stuff like the Gecko KO compositions and kind of getting ahead on that. I imagine they're a team that is going to be playing Clove, if not today, soon. And on the other hand, MIBR is still playing Solo Sky on most of their maps. They're honestly a team who seems very focused on their fundamentals, which is kind of what you need for a new team, but in a lot of ways they're being left behind by yeah. some of the other squads in our league. And of course we magnanimously at the VCD desk want to lend our brain power to the MIBR Mega Mind. So for a closer look at what they need to do, Ender has got some telestration for us. That I do. And to me, I think it all comes down to the fundamentals for MIBR. That is uh, typically a point where they have shown gaps in their past. And I want to look at three of their rounds from their series last week up against Crew, where they showed some pretty good mid-round ideas, but lost in the fundamental game. So first things first is a attack-sided half for MIBR is always based around some kind of 1-3-1 idea, where they're setting up to get three players and lurk into some mid-space to enable their, their star, Artisan, to find some kills. So, Early in this round, what do they do? They play for that early mid space. They also get FRZ into B main, and they note that it's a cipher on the B side of the map. So the decision making from MIBR is to go into mid, spam for any turret or uh, tripwire in top mid, and set up to open up some lanes of attack, right? So as they break that turret, all of a sudden the rotation comes through from crew, right? They think that, hey, it might be a finish over into the B site, but MIBR are still playing things relatively quietly. And here's where they reset inside of the round. So now they've cleared away B main. They know there's no forward information for crew over there. They also know that this door is still broken, so there's very likely no one in market. This tells them it is now time to fake an attack into market. So what do they do? They wait this one out and eventually start to break down this door. They'll send a sky flash, an omen smoke, and a raise dash into market. Here it goes. No dash, sorry, but we clear on in there with the sky. And what this does is it pulls crew now. It pulls them over here and it opens up this lane of attack. And as three players go through mid, they're also going to start creeping up into elbow. It's a nice idea here to get this, you know, slick little creep going in and they see Klaus, they force him back. But here's where the fundamentals take over and the problems start to come. Hold on, what's our spike doing? Spike hung out in mid while the rest of the team passed through this area. Now we know there are players right there, but no one holds to get this spike across. So coming over with the spike, RGL Meister just gets knocked down and we lose the spike there. That happens a lot where teams will swing into lines and kill them when they scale forward. Now looking forward into this next round, it's another cool mid round idea. So in a very different style to the last round, they realize crew is actually playing forward in B main. So what do MIBR do in this type of a situation? Well, instead of 
of reacting and falling back into the A site, they choose to come back into B and push that omen out of the area. Still putting pressure in mid, breaking the door, breaking a twip briar, putting a smoke in top mid, and they dive into the space to force the player away. It still gets pretty interesting after this though, because it's not so simple for them, right? They dash in, they push him away, but they don't choose to accelerate into this site. Instead, they take the orb on Artazine. Now Artazine is two off ult right now. With this, he's gonna be one off. So what the team chooses to do is they actually start rotating back over towards B. They are gonna threaten picking up that orb there and executing into A, and they make it with two sets of footsteps. Now a Sky Dog is gonna go in towards that side of the map. And also that Omen ult fake out is pretty sweet there too. Do you see that? Going over to, oh, sorry, it's about to come here over into spawn. The Omen ult fake into spawn right there, right? They're threatening going into A, and then they get a walk into the B site. So it's all about this misdirection coming after putting a lot of pressure in the mid and pulling players into that area. This round looks good for them, but here's where, again, it falls apart, because what happens after two rounds of slow playing mid? The enemy team is gonna run at you. It's an eco as well, and MIBR cannot deal with any form of mid aggression, right? Like, players are swinging through smokes and they keep going in this round, hunting down players outside of uh, A main now and getting those kills. But this is not just an eco round thing. This is a very consistent issue of MIBRs where they do not respond to either full aggro pieces in mid like that, or remember back to the first game, or the first round, it's just swinging into lines. They're not holding their teammates through. And that was a big, big issue when they played up against Sentinels back in kickoff. That is something they're going to have to fix. And uh, we'll send it back to the desk for more. Thank you very much, Christy. Yeah, look, to be fair, it's pretty classic crew on an eco just to buy pistols and run into and run mid. <laughs> but that was, like, it's quite elaborate what we're seeing from MIBR, but it's riddled with holes and gaps that can be exploited. Yeah, and that's the thing for me, right? This is a team that fundamentally understands how to play this game. There's a reason they're playing at this level. They, they get the basic, they get the fundamentals, but these late round gaps in execution, forgetting about a little thing, for, you know, not being a step ahead of your player, of your opponent's adaptation, that's what's getting them game after game. And that's why I'm afraid they're gonna continue to be a fine team and not a team who can really show up and, and beat our best. Yeah, we mentioned about creativity as well, and that's another thing is all these teams are accustomed to playing against these metas, against these comps. Every single one of these teams understands how to fundamentally play this game. It's just a matter of who is more creative. And unfortunately, right now for MIBR, I don't really feel it. I mean, we can, we can even zoom out here and, and sort of ask a question about our Brazilian teams at sure. large, right? Because they are still without a win here in this stage, just kind of pointed out with that lower third. MIBR, probably the one that a lot of people are looking at going, hey, wake up, do something. Make it happen. Yeah, poking them with a yeah. Yeah. Come, on. Well. Come on, MIVR. I, I don't think this is going to be the match. I think the reason that Loud steps above all the rest of these Brazilian teams is, one, they, they have the superstars. They have a player like Les who steps up and is ridiculous. You don't see that same star power in MIBR. And, two, it's the, it's the spice. It's the willingness to, to take risks, to try different comps, to try different ideas. And Sadak is an IGL being ahead of the curve. MIBR is very much in the center of the bell curve. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And for more, of course, on today's particular matchup, let's head over to Elizabeth, who caught up with assistant coach Fraud for some words. Fraud, if I can quick word with you, please. This season has been up and down for MIBR. Generic question about the boys. What has been the biggest challenge for them outside of the server to overcome? Um, you know, just being away from family. I think that was probably the biggest thing. You know, everyone's so far away. We don't have really opportunities to speak to them as often as we like or see them as much as we like. But, you know, we're in this together. So I feel like uh, through those sacrifices and stuff like that, we become stronger and hopefully build confidence and just focus on our training and just uh, the guys in our in our group. Well, good luck today. Thank you. So we're thinking about San MIBR. We're also thinking about regions, how they're performing in general. We got together with Mimi and Athena before the show to ask them to create an unbeatable all-star roster that would smite any opponent. It's time to check out their super weak teams. You can pitch them, That's present clever. Them, let us know. So it's it's funny because both words have the word super in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I got it. That's yeah. I no, I, I, I figured it out, actually. <laughs> That's crazy. Pitch me That's your cool. team. <laughs> you want me to pitch you my... Oh, it is me. No, you're yeah. I'm going to pitch my it's team. The thing. Show my team. First. This team, it's good. And here's who I picked. I went out Salt. and I decided to pick some of the best and brightest. I also gave myself a little limitation. Only one player per team. That, that was just okay. a little extra bit of fun. We're starting off with an all-star IGL. Sadak has led huh. more different players to international events than pretty much anyone else in the world. You then go over to your star. You know I had to get Aspas reunited with his boy Sadak in the controller role. We've got tens. He's been electric. The guy was ridiculous in Madrid. He's been good in Americas as well. He's an 
next factor for our team. Now we need consistency. We bring in Crash. He's one of the best initiator players that has been at the top level of VCT for so damn long. And you close out the roster with Leaf, a guy who can play on Sentinel, be a more passive player, but also add a little voice to the team when the you need to Cole, right? and have some, some crazy moments when he needs to as well. Okay. Damn, that's fair. I mean, you cooked up some stuff, but I think... Put some oh, hi, glasses. the glasses are on? The glasses <laughs> okay. won it. I, <laughs> I won, guys. <laughs> no, for me. Okay, hear me out. Zekin as duelist. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm okay. thinking of. Do Ooh, I this need to is say spicy. more? You have, if you have Zekin, a lot of duelists on this team. No, no, no. Hold on. Hear me out. Hear me out. Controller. An ex-duelist. King. Okay. IGL. Controller. Goes crazy. Love also that. can frag out. Potentially, you know, really good. Sentinel Victor. Come on. It's Victor. Like, he's been insane. His performance has been putting up numbers. Probably one of the best Sentinels so far in Stage 1. For the Initiator, we saw an insane performance from Heat last week. And I think that that can just say less. Say less, fam. You can go on KO. You're good. I mean, you're and pitching, this, so maybe say a little more. Are you, are you sold on Heat off of one week? Yes. Really? He but what about so last good. season? What, is he, no, what no, no, happens, though? Performed. Is he going to blow this team up? Anyway, my flex... My flex is Aspas. You know why? He can duelist. You're going to put go crazy. She's going to sign off. Sorry. Sorry. Put him on flex. He can go on controller. No. On no. No. What is, you're, 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 you're literally telling like the thing Lev did on Ascent two weeks ago where they took, they have the best Sova and Jet players in the world and then they just don't put them on no, Jet and Sova. Like, come on. They can go double duelist and Aspas can go crazy. You know what I'm saying? just smoke for people. <laughs> That's, this is not real. Trust me. Twitch, Trust me. who has the best team? You guys can spam your vote in chat right now while we continue to argue. We're pretty much... Okay, we haven't spent much time reacting okay. to your team, to be No, fair. Here's, here's, here's what I want to do. So the litmus test of, of Valorant is Ascent. Okay. Who, what is your Ascent comp with that team? <laughs> and who's on what? Um, hear me out. Okay. Uh, Asfas on Clove. <laughs> It's, sure, a, it's, it's a, a bit unhinged, but that's one of okay, the maps okay. that it's somewhat reasonable. All right, he KO. Okay. All okay, right. I'm fine with that. Okay, Santi Victor, he can do whatever he wants. Honestly, low key, he can do whatever he wants. He's cool. <laughs> say, say less. He's no. like a sage. <laughs> He's like a sage. No sage. It's, okay. a, it's a killjoy. We're gonna we're gonna lock okay. in killjoy. King, he can play rim. What? Brim Brim clove? Like rim clove. Rim clove. Play viper. No? Stim, you know how fast your team is going to Oh, yeah, you're zooming. Oh, my God. Okay. okay. The, the Molly the side. That's not no? real. You know how it is? And then Zach can, can just fly in. Can, yeah. I, can you look at that number on the screen for me, Myrna? <laughs> I do. Okay, so I want to give you five. Oh. Are you kidding? Look, I think, I, think, I, I think what I'll give you is you may have yeah, drafted the best is. pug team in the history of Valorant. <laughs> like, if, if I wanted a team to go out and play in Premier, that's the team I would draft. But if I wanted to win VCT, I'd go Mimi. I see the future nah. of your team. Two weeks. In. You've lost two <laughs> matches. You put, you put out a tweet. You sit down. Hello, Mirna Team City. We are <laughs> dropping Aspas for role issues. Team City. And your Yo. team dismantles. Okay, Twitch chat has officially spoken. And on the other hand, Sentinels and MIBR are minutes oh. away from taking to the stage. So let's jump headfirst into map select here. It's definitely something that's got us sitting up in our seats because we've kind of got a little bit more information about, you know, Sentinels map pool. And they've already said, hey, like our Lotus, for example. A little bit dodgy. Let's see what they end up going for now in our map select. Hey guys, welcome. As you know, teams were decided via coin flip. Sentinels is team A, MIBR is team B. Sentinels, you have first map ban. Ban Breeze. Sentinels ban Breeze. MIBR, what would you like to ban? Uh, I split. MIBR ban split. And what would you like to pick? Pick Lotus. Sentinels pick Lotus. And would you like attack or defense on that? Uh, attack. Attack. MIBR is select attack. And what map would you like? Uh, bind. MIBR select bind, and would you like attack or defense? Attack. Sentinels select attack, and you have one map ban. Ban ascent. Sentinels ban ascent, and what would you like to ban? We ban icebox. MIBR ban icebox, decided map will be sunset, and you have side select. Defense, please. Sentinels select defense. All right, boys, best of luck today. Thanks. There you have it. Lotus Bind, Sunset coming out of the picture. Let's get some quick predictions from our desk. Ha ha, Sentinels 2-0. That's the, <laughs> that's that's the prediction. Huh. But, but, I 
want to say that I don't like what you said about MIBR. What don't you like? I don't like it. You're you looking said, at me, you but you're said pointing at me. They've got to be creative. No, I was over there doing the Telestrator, and you're like, they've got to be creative. And I don't want this team to be creative. I just want this team to go back and work on their protocols, their scaling protocols. What are you oh, doing? Got I, got I, actually think, I actually think MIBR's <laughs> mid-round calling is so creative, and I love their ideas. I think that where they fall completely apart is individual, like the trust and scaling and watching like every corner because the amount of times I saw not just in that game versus crew but also in their series versus Sentinels back in kickoff Sentinels just swing into lines and own MBR that's why they're losing it's but, not deeper than okay but, literally brothers take it up all that time give me, give me your team give me your friends playing solo sky on as many maps as they do throttle their mid-round calling and the options they have Disagree. Anyway. <laughs> Two Sentinels. No All right, time. thank you very much. Two we're five days of matches ahead. Right. Let's get it started. <laughs> Sentinels in my BR. Cloud9 versus Lao. VCT America starts right now. In towards the back of the side. There's that first wing. Second shot coming through. Oh, no! John Cutie! Fake TP, e agora vem socão, ele perdeu e que beleza, é ele! Eu acho que não é loucura falar que a Sentinels hoje é o melhor time do mundo, até pelo que eles fizeram no, no Masters. Eles são um time que estão com um jogo muito sólido, um jogo individual também muito de destaque, principalmente do, do Ziken e do Tens. Então é um jogo que a gente está preparado, mas a gente sabe que vai ser muito difícil. Both of them pinned towards the back of the side. There's that first wing. Second shot coming through. Oh, no! John Cutie! And a point! Way down the wall! John Cutie! Saints around for Sentinels! Absolute cinema! I think it might be a decent show in, in the kickoff. They got second in the playing group stage. Brazilian teams like tend to play more aggressive. I mean, if he sticks this plant, he is in so much trouble. The fall line will come through. He tries to get in front of it, but he can't. He knows there's jumping towards him. Tries to confuse it, maybe finds it. Somehow he finds it. RGL Meister into clutch. Ah, com certeza eles vão voltar com sangue nos olhos para para poder voltar a vencer, né? Agora que eles perderam para o Leviathan. Sonho e em busca da vitória, me perde! Sentinels obviously a lot to prove coming off a rough one against Leviathan and MIBR still looking for that elusive first win not just for them but their region like we discussed it's Lotus last time MIBR on this map 10 to 13 with a loss and you can see Frod really trying to get this team hyped up they've seen Sentinels still a scary team on this map 
It'll be one to look out for. It absolutely will. MIBR, really, I think back to what you were talking about in that telestrator, Chrissy, the question is on the execution at the end of the day. They're playing these really simple ideas. They're playing these old comps. But so often, after a good idea, a good setup, they're stumbling at the last yard. And I think a team like Sentinels is really going to push it to them. This is a squad that loves being proactive in that mid-round and punishing teams like this. And literally, when Sentinels and MIBR faced off in kickoff, that's what happened. Sentinels just kept sort of walking into mid. It wasn't even like elaborate dive setups. They just yeah. took the fight to MIBR, and MIBR could not handle it. And that's what I want to see today. I don't care win, loss, whatever. I want to see MIBR that is playing solid, fundamental Valorant and not being, you know, victim to plays like that. Yeah, I feel like, especially on Lotus now, we've seen Sentinel kind of falter with their Lotus. They've mentioned how it's not 100% solidified set in Estonia, and I feel like if there, yeah, if there was a map that MIBR could finally push themselves past that obstacle that they've been getting, it should hypothetically be Lotus. But again, I'm looking at Sentinels for that firepower to just kind of like shut it down. And I'm looking at their comp. Will they pick Clove? Will Tens play Clove? Oh, That's the so question. Excited. He's been playing it. No. In ranked. He's been trying it out. Not on Lotus. Not on Lotus. Not Give me picking, the pick. Why is it illegal? Because if you don't pick Omen, then your only option on defense to leave a rubble embed on top of rubble is raise. And that is so limiting in your comp. I think the way all teams have sort of adapted onto this map is leaving Omen to be the forward uh, control over towards A. And Clove, you just simply can't do that. Also, the map is way too big. If you're dying in rubble as Clove, you're not helping the team by smoking anywhere else on the map. I was really trying to big it up as possible. But nope, not right. on Lotus. It probably won't happen. The teleport's big. On top of that, that paranoia for fighting space in rubble or mount is super important on this map when you are like never playing another line control agent. Hear me out. I'm going to cook one more time. Clove Omen. Let's go. And no Viper? Are you out of your mind? Zero, zero lurk wall? That would be <laughs> disastrous here. Let's pick Astra 2. Three okay. circles. You know what? That sounds fun. That is, that's the most amount of challenges, all right? Again, Loud are already getting do ideas. Do not let her GM your team. <laughs> we saw this segment Please before. Please hire me. <laughs> there it is. Sky coming up for JZZ, a very familiar pick here. So he, he's one of the last few players on this map that is playing solo Sky Lotus as your only initiator. And I think this can be an issue, particularly on their defensive side, because this is a map where you need aggression to get space early. They're oftentimes having to invest a lot of util in, which means their post plants in the late round are super weak. I'm looking to see how Sentinels are drawing out that Sky util, because once it's all gone, it's so hard to win a late round. Yeah, exactly. And what really went wrong for Sentinels versus Lev when Sentinels are on defense were all those opening gambits. That's where it fell apart. So I think MIBR need to come in very strong, contesting that space, especially Mound. That's where Sentinels were crumbling. That should be the focus point of the attack side for MIBR. Again, looked pretty good in the post plant. Sentinels, a bit of lineup Larry action there. Zelsus combining quite nicely. Called what a nerd. The he won way too many rounds, and he should have been allowed <laughs> on that kill joint. Yeah, true. Now, I think that both these comps, they have their pros and cons. I think this fade pick is always going to be a little bit scarier, especially now Sky with that nerf from a while ago. I don't know, Sentinels with this fade, I think it's going to be a lot more info gathering, a lot more pushing, a lot more aggression, kind of what we talked earlier. And I don't think they're going to give them IBR a chance to be able to push through and get that info that they're trying to get. We saw really messy fights on sites. Lotus really hard to sort of play, play a post plant off the site in general, right? So a lot of it's going to get hot and heavy, very hectic during those retakes. You need those rolling defenses, and Sentinels yeah. are expert at that. In particular, watch out the way, the way that they'll play their C post. Second will fight forward, initially with that fade util, about 25 seconds into that spike timer. They're falling back. They're activating that next layer with Zelsus and John on the mollies. Yeah, and I think on this map too, John does a phenomenal job at calling rotates and being able to hold that defensive side down. I think that's one of his strengths as an IGL and as a Sentinel player on this map. And I think that he can, or as a Viper player on this map, and I think he can really put it out there. And that is something that I think is going to kind of tip the edge and not allow the attackers to get rid of those rotations and punish that. Well, John QT asked this question to his teammates after a big clutch against Leviathan on Lotus. It was, do you guys want it? They didn't. Not that day. But it is a new day, a different day. So it's time to get this match underway and head over to our casters. Back by popular demand, it's Bren and Sideshow.
Thank you very much, guys. Let's get this one started here in the Super Week. Bit of a slow burn, Josh, honestly, for the opener here. Sentinels sure. versus MIBR. But something with a lot to prove, I think, for a team like Sentinels. Because like the desk could be mentioning, you know, they got off the back of that loss versus Leviathan. And they should have that fire lit underneath them, unfortunately, for MIBR. Yeah, and it's a rough one for MIBR. This is Super Week. Our teams are playing much more than they usually would. And MIBR's schedule is to play against Sentinels and then NRG. Yeah. Now, that is... Tough. That's tough. That's like getting shoved in the locker. And yeah. then, I mean, energy's coming knocking for the lunch money after. That's, uh, but on that's the, a rough one. On the other, on the other side of that, if you want to cope for MIBR, Sen might not be prepping as heavy for this game because they have to balance it out between the two matches. Ooh. Later on, playing against EG. Well, triple stack from Sen here on the pistol round. They got three players looking like they want to take a bit of a tumble and a tussle, maybe here with a paranoia set up by tens. These kind of setups. They're always a little risky because it relies on somebody taking contact on the defense side who could die early. FRZ is great with the shot. Sassy just jiggling here. The season has had it actually misses, rebounds it back into him. Unfortunately, there with a hitbox of it. Quite good though. They don't commit the nade and the paranoia off the back immediately. And Not wasting that util. Open for the taking. This is cute from MIBR. Yeah, I've contacted all the way in here, John. He's feeling that pressure from the one way he knows that he has to give up this space now. At least he's got the awareness. He's watching at a slight and safe off angle. So, come back away here, try and play for that. Retake a fight by Sentinels. They're forcing the issue forward in the jump spot by 10's almost a little bit risky, but the plant is down. And the plant able to be committed because there was that pressure over towards Waterfall. It wasn't smoked off. And MIBR choosing to fight it. And Sen find themselves in a 4v4 retake. Both raises down. Remember, that paranoia didn't get used early round from 10. He still has it. Yeah. Right, the kicking here with the smokes propped up here, dividing up the site. A little bit more palpable for them. Paranoia now finally gliding through. Big connection onto a multitude of tags, but again, there's no follow-up. The volleys are just delaying. How are Sentinels going to take this one with time of the essence sticking onto it? Sassy, half already. Might have just earned them enough time here. Mazin, all the way forward. Spamming and tapping all the way, John. Just about gets it. Oh, that's a heartbreaker for Mazin. MIBR also didn't buy very much post plant utility. Mazine, I believe, didn't come into the round with those snake fights. Only one Nana Swarm available as well. Perhaps that could make the difference when we go forwards. <laughs> Look at this. John's like, just keep my head low, mate. Yep, head tucked. Survives just long enough. That is my, that's my general plan in life. Just keep your head down. <laughs> hope, hope things whistle past yep. you. Uh, I, I want uh, a small audio issue on stage, Ben, but I do want to talk about this a little bit, right? Because okay. coming off the context of Sen losing to Leviathan, remember what Kaplan said. He said the two big reasons that they lost Lotus, they didn't come into it wanting it in the first half. Yeah? Okay. But also, he said, our Lotus is starting to get readable, especially our defense side. Now, if that's the case, and you're going to put a lot of time into Lotus heading into the Super Week, how unusual is it that Sen then end up picking the map heading into here? Yeah, I because mean, wouldn't you want to leave that open and kind of wait as long as possible for another team to pick it, thinking it's a sure. weakness, and you've actually worked on it? That, that to me is a bit interesting. On paper, I would agree with you. I think most people would agree with you. But Sentinels are not a team that really operate like on paper. They love the reps. I'm not gonna but lie. Tens is crushing this game. <laughs> <laughs> But they, they like the reps. They're a team that yeah. have proven that. I mean, we had the same kind of questions, I think, circling around teams that were going to be playing the most matches in a kickoff qualifier. Sentinels yeah. are one of them. We said, that's oh, going to be a disadvantage. Teams are going to read too much. Sentinels have thrived in that, I yeah, think. They've yeah, honed yeah. their map pools over time. So I don't think they are the, the type of team to try and hide strategies away. Even in these long weekly formats, they want to be constantly iterating. And uh, yeah, time for a bit of rest and relaxation, I suppose. <laughs> Got time to think as well. I mean, you're going to be heading into an eco round if you are MIBR. MI yeah. Uh, different approaches from both of the teams. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Now Zekin's uh, taking his moment There's to try so to much... stimulate his brain, and now he's he's into full relaxation mode. Yeah. A lot of trust to be in place. Of course, you know, listen, Secret Labs, fantastic chairs. They sponsor the show. <laughs> right. But I will say, I, I always trust. I squeaky bum time when I'm leaning back in one, <laughs> especially that far back, but hopefully getting this audio issue solved. Yeah. Um, just with the yin ears here. Yeah. Uh, and as we progress later through this map, something that I'm going to be keeping a big eye on is 
Uh, is there anything new on Sen's defense? Because if if Kaplan's talked about that being a potential weakness of it being too readable, yeah. have they brought new things to the table? Too early to know now, but that's going to be a focus for us heading later on. Yeah, I definitely think so. Getting a close look at some of the map pools and what they've got prepped and if they have innovated onto the Lotus. I mean, you're already seeing early signs of it. I'm um, just at the beginning with that, trying to set play, I suppose, just dealing with the Cs. Certainly, yeah, that's not a pistol round that I remember seeing from Sen before on their defense side to, to remind people what they were up to. <laughs> <laughs> they were mostly playing for mount control on defense so that this guy here could send a paranoia through and help them on the B retakes, just fighting B on his own with the flash. You wouldn't believe it, but he's uh, he can be sharp when he's in game and not snoozing. Okay, well, in the meantime as well, we get this setup ready. How did Aspas become Aspas? I know, a little bit, you know, off tilt there in terms of the... Uh, real topic here, but find out about his origin story in this clip from the latest episode of Common Ground. Was that tr was that the transition for you? Like, did you get into gaming because your dad was gaming when you were a kid? Yeah, when I was three years old, yeah. I started playing with my dad. Three? What, yeah. what game? I mean, what game are you playing at three? Oh, it was CS 1.6. You were playing CS at a... No wonder. I, this makes so much more sense now. <laughs> yeah, we have a really good bond because uh, I started playing because of him, mm. because he had the PC and he played, so I started playing together with him. If, like, I had a problem in the PC, mm. I would just call him and when he gets home, he would fix. Yeah. And uh, sometimes uh, the mouse that I had had some double-click problems. Yeah. And I would ask him, he would open the mouse and fix the problem as well. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Dude, yeah. So that's... if I had uh, any problem, he would fix. That's dope. And my father, he stopped playing for some time mm. because uh, he had to, yeah. like, give the time. Uh, and then now he, he's playing Valorant. Is he? Yeah, <laughs> he's playing Valorant when he finished work and he go back home at night. He plays some Valorant. Is he I... good? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably not. That's not a fair question. We we're talking about like, one of the best duelists in the world. My chain, my watch, my wrist, my house, my rise and grind. I give away all this to see my dog just one more time. But they're still currently working on it, as you can see from the players' positions. I mean, they're all well rested, sleeping. <laughs> yeah, they are. You yeah, need to get your break. You need to get your break at the beginning of the Super Week. It is going to be grueling. It might not feel like it now because we've just started, but this is five days in a row. For the teams, it's multiple matches that you mm -hmm. need to be preparing for. And for, for teams like Sen, where it's two teams you're expected to beat, actually, that can end up being a, a real trap that you fall into. We've seen that over in Pacific, I think, oh, yeah. with some teams that have played multiple times throughout the week, just finding it so tough to get good enough prep for both. It's a lot to really just prep for, like you said, you know, two teams in the week with the Super Week. I mean, we won't comment on the Pacific schedule. They've been having a Super Week every week for some teams <laughs> for some reason. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think one of the big reasons that the Sen fans are excited about this game is that they're expecting a bounce back, right? The, the Sen yeah. fans seem excited despite the fact that Sen just lost to Leviathan because they're thinking, yeah, we got a dub here against MIBR. And I think, listen, if you're a Sen hater, you might want to tune in and just see if something crazy happens too <laughs> at the beginning of Super Week, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, I completely agree. I mean, there was a bit of cope as well, I believe, on the desk as well in the pre-show talking about how this loss was good for Sentinels. Yeah. Because um, you don't want a team that's just winning everything and then they, you know, get complacent and uh, lose sight of what's actually real here, which is all getting those championship points and getting those wins that should be easy for you, that should be winning. I, I was watching the Sen, um, the vlog series that they're doing on the YouTube channel, actually, which is excellent. Shout out to the people at Sen making those. Uh, and one of the things that Zelsis and John Cutie were talking about when they were inside kind of the, the shuttle to take them to the event, I think it was the game right before Lev, they were discussing like the aftermath of Madrid. And like, yeah, I have a trophy, but listen, I, it hasn't filled that hole in my heart. I've still got to <laughs> keep competing. You know what I mean? Like when you're a player, you set your sights on that trophy. And then once you've lifted it, you have to actually reassess how you set those goals for yourself. Yeah, you do. You yeah. have to either think of a higher goal, like the champs trophy or winning here regionally or something like that. Or you have to try to find that satisfaction inside yourself of like, I, I just want to win every mm -hmm. game that's in front of me. I want to get better as a player. Where you find that motivation from, it's super important for player mentality. I completely agree. Yeah. And now I've heard that they need a few more minutes to actually set this one up. So there's two options here for the people at home. Okay. Um, you continue to listen to us yap and get paid by the word. Yeah. Which I prefer. Listen, it's about, <laughs> it's about 100 per word. So yeah. listen, it'll be uh, earning a couple of bands at the end of this one. Or we could send it to a break. Okay. Well, let, let's let's go for rock, paper, scissors then. Okay. If, if they're doing rock, paper, scissors to open things in the tech pause, uh -huh. rock, paper, Are scissors. Are we going on goal? 
or three, you're like, how, we, how guy, we doing this? This guy doesn't how, even know rock, how, paper, scissors. How are we man? doing this? How are we doing this? You do rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah. If you win, we and go to break. And then on shoot, we go. If you win, we go to break. Okay, if I win, we go to break. Yeah. All right, rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. <laughs> <laughs> rock, rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Dude, we haven't planned this. Rock, rock paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Okay, there you go. The mind games that work. So we're going. We're going to break. Yeah, we're going to break. Okay, see you in a few. Okay, well, we're still uh, still doing well. I mean, I, I saw some cherry pick comments from Twitch chat as no, well. They weren't cherry pick. Yap has come back. I'm yeah. sure that was one out of thousands. Well, <laughs> to be honest, I, 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 I honestly, Godspeed to production finding those ones here. But we are trying to get this one uh, resolved, yeah. obviously, as soon as possible. We want the game to start as much as you guys do. Yeah, and, and so do the send plays as well. Yeah. Zelsis has been very vocal on stream before, uh -huh. talking about the fact that he had some audio issues recently and he was frustrated by the process. And uh, uh, I mean, this is the other side of the coin, isn't it? <laughs> it is the other side. You, you want to make sure that the players have the best situation possible, but John's uh, got a struggle with something working. So we they have been making progress and they are doing some final checks, but you know, you never you never know with the ghosts in the machines. Yeah, you never know. You know, you just take a bit of a break from the gameplay and then someone's been chewing through the cables. <laughs> um, yeah, God knows who. We haven't it, caught them yet. Yeah, entirely, entirely possible. Uh, yeah, where, where, where are they at? <laughs> Yeah, it's the number one. I mean, got, listen, got a win haven't, today? haven't seen the league game got yet. Got a win today. They did get a win today. Yeah, I was I was uh, prepping for America, so yep. I wasn't able to take a look over at Pacific, but there's definitely a VOD to review over there for sure. And listen, maybe we'll get some wild upsets in this area too. I guarantee there's going to be some there's throughout There's going to be some during the Super Week. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an endurance test for almost all teams involved yeah. you've got five straight weeks uh, weeks of mat or five straight <laughs> days of matches not weeks I, I love stage. i love by the way these faces on sticks that we have in the audience <laughs> they are so good yeah okay well enough from us let's send it down to the professional yap as we really can fill some time the desk what's going on guys Ah, uh, you know, just vibing, learning how to play rock, paper, scissors from you guys. Thank you, you very much for the demo. Rock, paper... No, no, I never really counted that game. International rock, paper, scissors? No, I mean, in Australia, we just sort of settle out disputes with, with violence. So, I mean, this seems way better, to be honest. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really down with that. I mean, look, 
we have the second line of yappers that have now stepped up. It's like, you know, it's like Civil War type stuff. We are now on the second line. We're going to test the brain power of our desk, all right? Because it hasn't really been utilised to its full potential today. We could have put the pistol round in the telly for this gentleman to yap over, but we decided to save that for a later time. We're going to play the game Where Are You At? That's right, the rules are Los Angeles. simple. <laughs> yes. You you won. Won. Yes, I did it. No, you're wrong. Well. We're in, aren't we in Santa Monica? It's a different municipality. No, we're in West LA. Baby, we're in West LA. Get owned. This okay, isn't Santa anyway, Monica. Uh, yeah, well, what's next? <laughs> Social Security? Gonna slap around the map. <laughs> the rules are very simple. We're gonna see a very small portion. What? I'm just rules. Buzz. You can't bleed me. We're gonna see a very small. <laughs> Hello? Can I try it? Wait, wait, wait. We'll, is he allowed to? We'll see a very small portion of a map and have to guess which one it is. Let's get this started and bring up our first one. All right, small portion of the map. Show it to me. Bring it up. So, bring, bring it, our first one. Uh, what? 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 Is ascent. this the loo? Oh, ascent. Uh, yeah, ascent. Where? Ascent no, no. Gelato shop. This is Pearl. Ascent gelato shop. Wrong. It's I Pearl. Think, I think Pearl. it's Ascent where the little guys are uh, in like in wine. I think it's wine. in art in Pearl. Are they? Are you going to oh, dig us a, when we get it right? There's a reason it's called art. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we're not going to dig it, so I think we're going to see it. All right, let's let's, let's see it. Don't, even think, don't expect me to guess. There's no way that's happening. I want to dig. I'm too busy looking through my teammates' POV when I play. Why is that? Because I'm dead! <laughs> you want to get shot, you die! Wait, That's we're true. slow zooming out. Are we? That is, that I is, think. That is glacial. Yeah, we're, we're, we're moving there. Are okay. We? Oh, no, they really wanted us to right. this segment. Oh, my God. Okay. Hey! Oh, okay. Oh, oh, you're actually insane. You're you insane. You overcooked, Let brother. Go. I overcooked. Oh. My bad, my bad. Too smart. Too wise. Okay. What am I win? Knowledgeable. Okay. What do you win? Wait, there's more. Yeah, but wait. Congratulations. There's more. All right, we got more. Let's try another one. Here's our second. Okay, a little control uh, room, a little bit cartography stuff. Oh, this ice is box. Bo no, this is bind, I think. Ice box. You might be right that it's fracture. ice box. Fracture. It's either fracture, ice box, wait, or bind. It's one of half of the maps. It's one of the kingdom maps. Oh, I know that for sure. Like, how could this be ice box? There's a little office in ice There box. is a little I office. Like yeah. Whoa. Oh, hey. Holy. Do one of them I'm have the it. answer? Oh, I want to. Can we get some right. subway surfers? So, in there? okay, so. We, we think it's Icebox or Bind. We're gonna have to commit to one of these. Wait, what is it? What is it? Look at it. Look at the, the sticker. I think it's Icebox. This is where, isn't this where Cypher's hanging out? Wait, I'm trying to look. There's a mini map. What mini map like, is that? Had Cypher sitting there on the computer. Do you see it? Wait, that, that's not a Valorant map. That's, that's not a Valorant map. Yeah. They leaked. They leaked oh, a new map. That's new crazy. Map. Is this is this Bind? No, wait, this is no. Icebox because that's the Yoru like reveal thing in yeah. the top right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one shotting every one of these. I'm gonna look like a fool if I'm wrong. All right, let's see it. There are our guesses. Which map is it? We're zooming out. Yeah, it's box. Box. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Fair enough. Spawn. The yeah. sticky notes sort of threw me for a loop there. All right, yeah. nicely done. We've got another one here. Over to you. Our third yeah. map. What do we think about this location here? It's a uh, teddy bear oh, mentioned. Oh, it's Lotus. Is that a cupcake? It's Lotus up in the top of the ceiling. Of Breeze in the middle of the pillar. This is on the ceiling? What yeah. are you guys just floating around in custom games looking no, at the I teddy bears? Are you what like, is are you happening? Well, the real reason is I watch a, I watch a lot of Pro Valorant and the uh, obviously Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. You, you watch a lot of I don't. So. <laughs> yeah. But in like the freeze time, I watch a lot they, of EMEA, so. so got true. They, but our observers love showing these things and they're the ones who made this. Yeti made this, I think, mm. probably. I don't know. I'm going to credit him. Thank you. And he's the guy who Give us turtle. Lotus. I think so the was on the ceiling. Of right Lotus, there. right? On the ceiling of Lotus, like okay. up in the skybox. All right, it's time for the big reveal. Is it indeed? Oh! Okay. Oh my god. Uh, what? Dude. Come on, okay. that is. No one Whatever. goes there. No, apparently she what? does. The, okay. observers. <laughs> the observers show the teddy. They love the teddy bears. Right. There's only one thing observers like it's teddy bears. And turtles. Right there. They love turtles, Mimi. Unbelievable. We I got one, one more. We have to embrace the turtles. One more? Actually, we might actually not have five. Mimi's in the lead right now. Let's do this one. Uh, Wait, I need a one. This is the show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Fracture. <laughs> okay, we have a control panel. Something's critical. Fracture, I think. What is going on? I, I, I have not been to any of these. Pl I thought we were going to go to real places on the map. We're going out of bounds. I feel like this is not fair. But the, you, it is fair. <laughs> no, it's sunset. Why? Why? Because Dizzy reveal, top left corner. Oh, all the Easter eggs. Because this is where Riot put all the Easter eggs in and sunset came out around uh, Dizzy. There you go. You don't even have to watch time. Pro Valorant. You just yeah. need to be right into the ARG sunset. content. Is this in? I think he's actually right. The map. I don't think it's Fracture, but I don't know what okay. it is. I'm, like I'm no longer smart. No, no it has to be Sunset. Clothes. Sunset's the only map. In the pool? No, yes. 
Okay. Oh, I mean, according I to our that. teams, everyone picks Sunset <laughs> here in Americas. All right, let's I'm show I'm down for Sunset. Is this, in fact, Sunset, given the presence of Dizzy on the monitor? Uh, yeah. Bingo! Yeah. Okay, now that one you don't even need to go out of, out of bounds to see, to be fair. You just mm -hmm. need to be... Flashed. Yeah, but when I'm holding in a post plant, I'm not looking into the no. wall. No. <laughs> what are you doing? It's, right. yeah, it's your trophy. Oh. We'll hold it. Congratulations. Yeah, you're now the bearer of the... I thought she was trying to kill me with two <laughs> fingers. No, no, no. I wouldn't in the... Nope. Nope. I'm anti-killing. <laughs> Killing is bad, actually. All right. Okay, yes. Unless it's in game. <laughs> Thank you very much for that ratification. Let's talk about our last little spot here. Where are we now for our fifth location? Oh, it's split. split. It's, be it's heaven. Be heaven. heaven. Yeah. You look up, you see tower. Okay. Yep. That one might be pretty Falcons. quick and easy. We're locking in B heaven on split. Show Give the it reveal. to us. God, it's like I'm there right now. I'm in great suspense. I have another game we can great play. Great suspense. Well, can you, you do you want to play rock, paper, scissors with me? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We go on shoot, okay? Okay. Come on. Fair game, all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I thought you were going to take you it got off. Owned. I thought you were going to take it off. <laughs> How do you lose? Oh, <laughs> I have a cook. Well, you see, I thought too much about it. We're it's still in a tech pause, unfortunately, but let's make the most of it instead. Turn this into a tech pause. That's P. Oh. A W S. Oh. oh. Yeah. Like pause. pause. Like pause. I, it's, I don't write it. It's I'm okay. Yes, oh. we want you to send us pictures of your Valorant loving pets with the hashtags BCT Americas or BCT, and we'll share them to everyone here. That's right. We're into pet content, folks. That is where we're at in this particular tech pause. We have a wingman right here. That's our pet. That I'm counts, right? That does count. I can't believe you did I'm, that. I'm to me. How did you lose your work? Because I just assumed there'd be something subversive <laughs> going on. Like, you just no. it off. And, uh... No, see, I'm, I was playing like Oxy. Just don't think. Just, you know, do. I'm too I'm jaded. Working. Like, I could have just taken <laughs> you your face value and an easy dub. You? That's unreal. That's Man, funny. We you live know, in a society. Phone on set. We truly That's are. crazy. Yeah, like, I, did, I worked. That's crazy. I gave content. You worked. Did, did you, you see, tweet, did you see any pet pics? No, but I tweeted one. Oh, great. Oh, let's get it up on the screen. I mean, <laughs> as if we get it <laughs> <Wait> a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we will at some point. Mm, I can't wait to see how that sort of pans Anyone out. Anyone willing to bark? What? 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 No. What? Who said that? Who said that? What? Who said that? What's, that's crazy. What's, what's wrong with Baki? Is that not allowed? No, is that allowed? Or? No, that's 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 legal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, sorry, I didn't know. I said, all right. Well, while we uh, while we, we catch up with yeah, while we catch up with Mimi again, we we'll, we'd love to see what you guys are up to during our tech P A W S. We'll be able to share them that out as well. well. And again, like, there can be action shots. They don't have to be pictures. <laughs> they can be videos. We actually have the functionality so that you're back. I was, I was fine. I was just imitating oh, a dog. Look, live Sabine that. reaction. That's great. Aww. Yeah, that was quick. Yeah, it's yeah, live. It was. That was fast. That's, That's actually that a, crazy. Was that in the drafts or like? No. That was wild. I just have a lot of cat pictures in my <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Cute. Good There's heavens. more, though. All right. We are ready for the game, believe it or not. We somehow really? bought just enough time treating water. Damn. We're ready for the game. Let's head back over to our casters. Brett and Josh, take us in. We're back. We're ready. We hope we're ready. I think we're ready. <laughs> Don't say anything. Uh, no, no, no. no. Okay. This, this is going to work. We've been told we're ready. Uh, and time to get into it. I mean, John, John looks ready. They look focused. Yeah. Locked in. The timer is ticking down. We're heading yeah, back in. Yeah, okay. If you missed it, send one a retake oh, what is that? over towards C. And Artazine has decided to force up. This is what C9 was doing. And actually, the rifle. The China teams were doing this as well. Yeah. Full armor. Rifle gets dropped for you. Only really available on the attack side. You've got a. A bit more extra pocket money to spend here with Mazin getting caught onto the middle lurk early. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, Brent. Normally, this strategy you want to be putting the player with the rifle that you've forced uh, in position to take the fight, and you don't really want to be losing players Ooh. early. Artazine's good, he he's good. been one of the best new additions to MIBR. He looks like he's got chances of taking them across the line in some big rounds. Just missing yeah. the timing, JCZ. Jumping up. It's the back of the cranium for Tens. It's going to be caught and catched on. Zelsis now is close and in danger. Spray down with the bullets here. Narrowly avoiding and spraying through. Two. But a nade overlapped. No damage, really no harm into the round overall. So with three surviving and that rifle picked up as well. A tasty little upgrade, courtesy of the opposite team. Yeah, and there's a big downside to going for this kind of thing. Ooh. Especially when they're peaking at the beginning. I just don't really understand the way that FRZ and Mazin were playing that when Artazine is actually the player that can make the difference. 
So you come into the next round and MIBR are not going to be able to afford a rifle on one of their players. Tens still has the outlaw. That can pick off two of the players on MIBR, Ardazine and RGL. Soft angle is a, a brutal one. Anti-flash position, look at it. And there's Ardazine, he had light armor. He goes down in one. Full speed ahead though, with the door opening up, we'll force out that Util and that Prowler. Proactive by Sentinels. That was just to set Zekken up into this forward position. Look at him. Sat there with the judge and he could turn them into mince meat. The moment's notice. FRZ, if he dies or goes down to a wide face, it's wide enough that he will survive to the solo single shot. There's a little bit of a gamble involved there for sure. And Spike drops. not bad damage to be honest with you, because again, even though FRZ's been healed up, he dies to one shot from tens. And it, it makes it much easier for John QD and Sassy to get the kills too. This is nice though. Pressure towards the alarm bot on C as they start to work their way in on A. One getting broken though. This is pressure on two fronts here by MBR. So he's trying to sow a bit of deceit and chaos. See if they can pull some of these rotations. But Sen aren't being convinced. Now they will be. And now chance and opportunity. Look at this, Mazine. Yeah. Strikes correctly and precisely the right moment. The problem is for Sen, is that a lurker? Is that the full hit? Was it a fake? Or was Mazine just playing a very aggressive lurk on Viper? They're unsure. They don't know where to commit right now. There's only 13 seconds left, pushing through the smoke. I mean, Jesus, they taking that fight straight to them on an open A side. That has sown enough, at least chaos there, into the mix of the round. They have to deal with these stragglers. Jesus, hey, the Stinger shot to the head. He's still alive and kicking though, and he is causing all sorts of distractions, isn't he? Leave it to Tenzi on the bonus. I don't know where a lot of these players are. Single shot, there we go. Straight to the chest. One more in the chamber. Not enough though. Ample armor just saving the day there for Mazine, but a 1v2. And potential chances here for Sassy, but time running short. You can start to hear it ticking and ticking away. Gotta get a move on here if you want any sort of chance. One spotted. The tap. Forcing them forwards, but here it is. MIBR follow through there and taking away a win there against the Sentinels bonus round. And frankly, the way that Sassy was unable to get that final kill actually helps MIBR's economy a little. It's still a really devastating bonus though. A couple of moments where MIBR perhaps got away with it a little. You know, certainly the Prowler to set up Zekin on an aggressive angle could have benefited them. And MIBR are going to come into the next round. Two people on light armor and a bulldog. Tens has another outlaw. Out. Really prioritizing it. Toxin screen down. Deep horn, some pressure applied here by Sentinels out towards a rubble. They won't control with this area. Really only being postured off by Mazine. There's a paranoia exchange on either side out on the opposite section of the map with Mazine falling. A control now going to be going towards Sentinels and all in the middle of all of this. Up to the corner, that Zels is here, and he's playing again the bait and switch and a snap to the side. Angel Meister, at least with the trade, but now he's just a solo player. One left standing, TP's up, and it's too predictable. MIBR in the previous round playing both avenues of the map, creating pressure on CNA at the same time. Well, Sen just did it on their defense side. They made it feel like it was heavy pressure over towards Rubble when Mazine dies at the beginning of the round. And in fact, They've actually got a bait and switch set up over towards C as well. Now, there's a few things going on here strategically for MIBR. One is they're putting a heavy emphasis on trying to lurk into C if they're given mount control. The other is we've seen players just walk into B at like random mid-round timings. They've been heavily punished for that. So I would expect MIBR to not be trying to take those timings as much anymore. Let's see if it instills that level of discipline. MIPR uh, only sitting themselves here onto the half by round. Arzine with an ult and a bulldog. I have to spike. Real tools at their disposal. See if they can apply some pressure to that one. Maybe with a pick. Might even think about offloading the ult, but for now, just farming them up. FRZ getting two away. Thinking about the next rounds. Yeah. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm really paying attention to what Sen's defensive setups look like here because that was the thing that Kaplan had identified in their match against Lev. <laughs> Dropped down to 10 HP again there. Falama saved him. Yeah. 
Well, with the amount that Sen have been using the outlaw, it doesn't seem like a bad idea to go for it. Here. WA pressure now. We're going to be sending all of their players out towards C. Haven't actually got rid of any of this setup. The Nano Swarms. Significant amount of damage there, but just offering the upgrade now with the kill. Found. Four v five. And we'll go down. Yes, it will. Might be a kill though. Yes, with the util flushing RGL Meister out into the open. Straight into the rifle fire, but it's mixed danger hands here. Now the showstopper really being afforded to use. They're trying to buy enough time for JCC oh! to go around. And Sassy's watching for it. It's the awareness by Sassy. Just expecting that it could be a possibility. Of course, that noise was made a little bit earlier, and prior Haunt taken care of, but on and up there. Can't level the shots. So Sentinels, a really good win for them, in all honesty as well. I mean, four players surviving and getting some of those critical ults out of MIBR. Yeah, uh, and they even have the option with the defuse of whose ult they want to try to get up towards the end. They've chosen Zekken, so that showstoppers online for Sentinels, but they could have gone with Sassy just as easily. You can see that both of these teams are making micro adaptations to each other. MIBR choosing to go with some more of the full armor, realizing that uh, it's just ridiculous the amount of tens of Zekin have got outlaws yeah. pointing their way. But now we get to more of the real game where things have started to stabilize in the economy, although this is an eco swing round for MIBR. But there is a bit of economic stabilization, and this is where alts are starting to get online. So now you get that extra layer of the mind games. And all of the things that MIBR are trying to do, there's only one that's really worked for them. And it's that smoke they're putting on C that's allowing them to get past the turret and creating pressure in that kind of way. Yeah. Everything else, the like walking in on B, the rubble fights, Sen have been very easily shutting down. It's a little bit half-baked from MIBR. Yeah, I think to give them as much credit as possible, to be as generous as possible, I think MIBR have probably looked at old footage of Sen playing Lotus and I think in mid round, we can, or early mid round, we can walk in B because they just don't play people B. It's, yeah. it's an alarm bot or a turret and the wall, and that's it. And now that Sen have started to mix things up, I think those harder reads are catching them and leading to MIBR players swinging through that Viper wall and going down. Um, you know, normally these teams, they do actually have reasons that they do things, but sure. it's based on either scrim reads or old VOD footage or something like that that teams have already adjusted. And especially considering Senna there. trying to change how they play. I mean, here, for example, you specifically have the turret, but you also have Zekin on B, you know, two layers to that B defense. Holding close for that show stop, but just in case. The C's only the one connection. A rubble control will be conceded. So maybe our brand to some of that ground. A couple of bullets there going through the door before it fully closed up. And they want to make another go of this here. No, but the snake might drop down at your feet. I mean, it's a hard zine in no man's land. It, that's not good enough, Batman OBR. You need way more pressure, and you also need to bait out that util. Play towards the reactions here. The dog puts that connection onto the stun as well. JSSA he's seeking to capitalize. He is so fast onto the target now. Deciding what util he really wants to just offload here. Now to the Seekers, but that's going to be causing a Paranoia to go flying. And MIBR is disjointed at best here, but now they're finally starting to gain some of that ground and scaling into the site. But they've got to remove these pesky players. Reinforcements arriving. Still, collection of kills out towards the back. Nana Swarm a little bit too shallow there. Doesn't connect in a snap of the wrist from 10. Certainly does with Mazine dropping Spike out in the open. And the last one spotted the solo player of FRZ, not a chance. <laughs> All right, I did. Easy stuff from Sen. Great little play from Tens as well, a fake teleport. Just put in the middle of that after he'd already, you know, Sassy had already dropped the player that had the spike. MIBR though, they're losing their entry player, trying to get in through tree, yeah. not really able to create enough pressure with utility. We've seen teams run Paranoia Prowler plays to do that, or fake a push towards the main site, or tap the door as you look like you're pivoting B to try to draw out utility. There's a lot of different ways of handling that. And now in this round, they will have FRZ's ultimate to be able to work with. But instead, their economy kind of shot. That's all over the place. These mound fights were killing Sen in their game against Lev. Yeah, they certainly were. But that was on full buy rounds where the uh, attacking team was using a, a smoke in a really nice position, just where these guys are pushing into here to create a lot of 
aggressive pressure and denying information to the defenders. I haven't been seeing it too much, though. No. Not at all. It's, it's an incredibly meta smoke to throw right now. MIBR, though, are playing this more like an eco where they're just searching around the map, pushing people back, seeing if they can work picks. The problem, though, for MIBR yeah. is we're halfway through this attacking half for them. They haven't even forced out ultimates no. on the side of set. So this is looking dire. Yeah, haven't forced out the ults. I mean, essentially generational wealth on the side of the Sentinels players. There are no risk of losing any of the economy. And looks like losing any fights either. Just don't have the weaponry for MIBR. And it's dire straits, really. Think about Lotus as a map. It's heavily attack sided at this point. I mean, six to one. Left. Sentinels on their defense side. They have come out here with something to prove. Yeah, it was a slow beginning versus Lev when they sat on Lotus. They said it themselves. You can see it watching the game. They were out of sorts. Yeah. And if you give enough credit to MIBR that the ideas they're trying of the lurks we want to see, the, the early mid-round timings of just walking into B, that kind of thing. If you give them the credit that that's based on VOD footage, then you're seeing the dividends already from set. Yeah. Right? You'd put change it up. Work. You change it up and suddenly down a. other teams can't get that anti-strat advantage. Left. They have to just battle you with... Uh, head-to-head. -head. Big ultimates available here. This is MIBR's best chance of allowing the momentum to swing just somewhat in their direction. But again, I want to draw your attention. RGL using that one way over towards C. It, it, this is not the meta smoke right now. It's more to do with putting one on the floor to be able to get in. It's a little here. Uh, better for the attack side teams, usually. Protocols. You can see from Sentinels, I mean, Zelsus is just holding the lockdown. They're willing to give C mount control, expecting FRZ to use his over in that direction. Probably going to be used in response to that, but here we go. That pressure towards A. Holding on to the paranoia, using the horn. Couple That's of bullets spraying through. A nice additional layer to the protocol there from Sen. Tens doesn't commit the paranoia unless there's noise. Even after the Prowler catches contact. Gotta be clean though with the movement. This is one of the first rounds where MIBR actually have mount control and they're putting pressure towards A. So this feels a bit like when MIBR got that round by creating pressure on both sides of the map and confusing Sen. One of the issues is Sen have big ults to try to re-clear oh, wow. all their ground. That. What a time to use the pit. It's going to be defended as well in this place. Drop down here. It's Celsius. It's going to try and watch the car. Oh, what is that? Thirty seconds left. just free firing up top there. That will remove the pit. And now Celsius is in a bit of danger here. Well, let's go flying. FRZ. This is a great pit. down. Nightfall on top of it with the pit. It is a collection. Cacophony of ultimates all offloaded here. Showstopper on top of it. And who will be the winner? Who will be the victor? It's chaos thrown into the mix. And it feels like it's all set to the walls of the bullets. Don't have to break the lockdown. Two versus two. Spike is down. Paranoia. Flying, gliding here, dropping down into main. Got to try and defend their positions and stop them from really getting themselves into position. FRZ holding it down inside of the smoke. And it leaves it to Sassy in that 1v2. 1v1 still now being found here, but here it is. Getting the time ticking. To the tap kidding. onto it, seeing if he can at least force that position out wide, but he doesn't have a clue where FRZ is. And the reposition is immaculate. So, the second one on the board here for MIBR. What did it take? Absolutely everything. And even then, <laughs> there was definitely an opportunity for it to slip away for them. Credit to MIBR. Their understanding of what was happening here was lovely. That kill, bonkers. Onto John Cutie. I mean, but, off sound cues or what? Yeah, I don't but, know. But the pit the machine goes for allows them to challenge the lockdown. It's just that Zelsis ran in and killed the Viper. So Mazine ended up falling too. But at least MIBR are there using their ultimates well, using the Viper's Pit, using the Lockdown to create pressure on Descent and putting it into a winnable scenario. Now there's another issue. Tens with the off. Oh, that's true, actually. In through the one way. They want to disrespect this one, but as this was happening, Mazine again, losing that battle out towards A, Rubble. Feeling like he has to overexert himself ever so slightly, maybe. Connection there from Trailblazer. Will it signal the go button? Yes, it will, but they're being blinded up and just sprayed down. MIBR don't seem to respect snake bites in the way that perhaps they should be, because Sen have got the follow up every time behind it. Mazine's died on these aggro lurks a little too much. MIBR not waiting for the main portion of their fight to cause a distraction before getting the lurk in. What a shot. Spike and it's down, just a catastrophe. See. Every block falling. As MIBR capitulate. These snake bites have been 
perfectly timed from John Cutie, but there have just been so many moments where either he's picking up the kill or a teammate is picking up the kill on somebody who egos them. We saw Artisan fall to that over towards Tree. We're seeing it here on the C push. 30 seconds I think left. MMBR can't really get a read on where the Viper is, perhaps. Yeah. Because Sen are mixing up how that defensive setup works. You're just trying to disrespect. Ego check through with the decay and the snake bites. And that's going to work against worse teams. If you try to find holes in worse team setups, they, they're going to be there. The desk has talked about it all day, about some of the holes that are present in MIBR's game. But when you play against the top teams, they have minimized the amount of holes involved. And this is, you know, nice pathing from Artisan to be able to double blast back over the top of the snake bite, but no utility pressure on those players. Just holding the crossfire. Rough stations for MIBR, but Sen looking pretty. Round 10 with the money not good. Horn doesn't get broken. Should be able to set up tens with the operator deep onto the A line. FZ getting spotted, but there's no follow up after the prowler. And I like the fact that MIBR have more passive lurk players here from FRZ and Mazine. The problem is, this is an eco round where arguably you want to let them off the leash a little more. Yeah. Should probably be reversed. How do you cook up some kind of play to give yourself an advantage in this round? Are you relying on Artisan hitting a crazy sheriff shot? Because you don't really want to invest the showstopper 5v5. You want, you want an advantage before you go for it. Fox heard. Sentinels want nothing to do with it, actually. I mean, there was an option there for tens and second to fight it. He was definitely in position to nade the close corner. One of the first times we've seen MIBR end towards B. Oh, and the timing on that is just perfection. War goes down here, dropping a snake bite, though. They can't really cross the line of scrimmage. Second one now offloaded. And the swarm dealt with, so. From QT can still hold his ground, and it's just ring around the roses. I mean, desperation is the way I would call it. With only 25 seconds left. They don't know which way to end. No, but they've dragged out both snake bites and the seas. So MIBR can get in a lot more easily now. Shots aren't necessarily clean here. Showstopper. And the fuse right out. It is buying in that crucial time. Rocket doesn't collect a kill, and nobody's looking towards the back end of it. They think it's clear. John QT, he will capitalize. Through now as the door rotates. Player position scattered into the post plant. Yeah, post plant lineups though as well from Mazine and FRZ. And this is how issues. this is how Sen play their post plants here too. When will Sen get a bit of a read on this one here? Because time is going to start to run short. Here it is, snake by Sen flying. Yes, the kills are being collected. Sassy with half onto the view, sticking it all the way. Where's the lineup landing? It missed onto the ceiling. Maybe just in. I'm feeling a bit rushed and panicked, I suppose, into the round, but that was one of their best chances to get a win. Yeah, to be honest, you normally see those clutches happening with a nano swarm lineup anyway, not a snake bite. There's not enough kill pressure there most of the time. But you see the desperation that's creeping into MIBR's play. They're in a 5v5, and they choose to use the showstopper just to kind of keep the flood defending back. Yeah. Did they have a chance? Yeah. But not a large one of making that round work. Heavy rubble fight here for Sen. Again with a snake bite this time. They are just corralling, collected up. Seeing if they can take that gamble and that fight together. The Sentinels are the ones who are entirely favored. Not willing to give up that space. That's a utility combo again. Sen have not fought with four players over this side of the oh. map. Oh. And they... <laughs> MIB are certainly not expecting Zelsus to be tucked under mound there. But yeah, Sen are really mixing up their defense side. They haven't gone for a heavy rubble fight. <laughs> <laughs> ah, playing with your food, perhaps? Well, you fancy with it, at least. Spend everything. We keep nothing. Tens and Zekken both got shut down in the game against Leviathan. They weren't really able to have that same star player impact you expect from them. And Aspas, uh, as you said earlier, Brent, pushed them into the locker and stole their lunch money. <laughs> and now they've come back and basically hurt people hurt people. Yeah, they Ten do. <laughs> it's a, a cycle of misery, yeah. cycle of pain. Tens and second are like, right, well, we got bullied in the live game, so now we're actually going to bully MIB. It's <laughs> <laughs> the final round here, the first half of Lotus. Door 
shutting, slide opportunity for tens, but nobody peeks their way out. Everybody's grouped up, though. And this does feel very much just like an all-in attempt by MIBR. Seeking to overwhelm Tenz's position. He's going to get us out of there. Interesting Ooh. and unorthodox. Op sight line? Yeah, tucking Maybe. away. He's worried about there being a slight gap here, but as the smoke fades, he might be able to get his eyes onto somebody, one player maybe, but not accounting. The close pushing. corner, pushing him. Uh-oh. Hello with the rocket at the feet, and Anacin dealt with RGL. Quick to take up that space once more, and the deep flank all the way wrapped around. That's going to be causing distractions here. Paranoia flying through, blinded up, kills. Need to be found here in a three versus three, making a three versus two. That might be our... Trying to withstand this one, they are still in the post plant. Maybe there are still chances for them here in the post plant position with this door. Snake bite, Nana swarms. So now they know the rough positions of both players. They do. Maybe enough time pressure could be purchased. Spamming through half ah, already. Enemy purchased enemy. and bought. Maybe the backup plan. Zekin brought down. So nine to three will be that final score line. Question is, is it enough for MIBR? Side. Swap in half. They're gonna be going over to the defensive side of Lotus. Yeah, Sen looking yeah, like they've got a pretty big advantage here, to be honest with you. But at least MIBR able to convert that round. Good plant position. Players staying alive there from Mazine, from FRZ, playing the post plants, playing the spam lines. But that was only enough for three. Only enough for three. Barely enough. I mean, it goes without saying, pissed around as we get into that next half will be a must win. But let's send it down to the desk to hear them break it down so far. And so a reckoning has been unleashed. Its name is Sentinels. What a way to bounce back after a disappointing result. But we talked about MIBR in the pregame, so there's actually some play to their mid-round. It can be elaborate at times. Doesn't seem so now with their A lurker dies off the rip every time. Yeah, I, I feel like the biggest issue of this half was MIBR constantly calling these kind of 3 one ones as you're normally calling heavy towards A or C on Lotus. And their one player, either on that A or C lurk, was just getting flushed out and punished every round. And that meant that like time after time, MIBR was having to call into the C site, which is stacked with both the Viper and the Killjoy Mollies, and they were getting obliterated. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing as well that contributes to that is not only was the lurker dying a lot, they also also couldn't punish any of the rotations. They couldn't pull any of the rotators off of their sites, and they also couldn't punish any of the solo aggressions. We saw Tens just pushing up A by himself, and he was completely able to just take that space completely alone. At some point, it was even just saucy as the fade, which technically shouldn't really be possible. Yeah, and a big part of that was the proactivity from, from Zekin and Tens, yeah. right? Those guys were so good, whether it was with the outlaw or the op or these kind of combined fights, to push those players on the extremities away. Yeah, just as storm clouds start to gather, as we discussed, it might be are showing so far. Did something happen? I want to remind you guys, we asked earlier for some pet photos. It wasn't just a nefarious device to buy time during a tech pause, although you're forgiven for believing it. <laughs> we got some of these. You guys absolutely came through. Also with some puns. Oh, I appreciate that. Look at that. the chunks. Are so cute. That is. Is so that a rabbit in a cowboy gonna, hat? Gonna, wait, that is so cute. I've never seen anything better in my life. Wait, these are some neat. How has this been cow? staged on such short notice? <gasps> oh, my, <laughs> look at him! What a chunk. That's me watching you. Then your chunk enjoy the Hey yo. Oh, okay. uh, hmm. Well, we've lightened the mood a little bit here and hopefully in the MIBR camp the same is happening right now because they've got a lot to do to start to make this game even competitive. Let's get that second half underway and head back to our casters. Keep sending in the pet photos, man. I mean, never know when you're going to need them. Never know when we're going to need them. Never take pause segment. I love that. It's excellent, but it uh, goes without saying, like we said, Pissed around for MIBR is the sole focus here, really, to have any chance um, whatsoever. Crossfire set up by MIBR. Yeah, it's a little similar to what we saw from Sen on their pistol. Three players stacked over towards B, looking to try to play more of a crossfire rather than an aggressive trap setup, I think. But Ardazine was there with the nade. Now they're clearing out B, looking to move back over towards A. They're going to have a good read here of where Sen are finishing. And a swarm will delay any sort of engagement out towards tree. But guess what? Paranoia is dodged. A longer ball that util. The kills are at least being collected here. It's evened out. On either side here, 3v3. Still no ground gained here to get a safe plan down. And there's a fast rotation from Audio might be our players up top here. It's a game of timing and chances. And RGL just doesn't win his out. Not when he's up against two. Very nice there from John and Zelsis to just put a pause in there, double up, make sure that they can train out a player on site without any risk. But John is weak. Yeah. And that opens up 
An opportunity maybe for Mazim, but he does need that one kill. Can he find the second attack from Zels? Has revealed the position, but matters not. To right click there. <laughs> <laughs> that is an unusual way of playing the 1v1, yeah. to go for the tap and give away where you are. Send your styling on them at this point. And a pistol round. Okay, I like the macro from MRBR. They got the fact that it was going to be an A hit. They tried to flood defend in, but you see the difference there with how Sen approach clearing tree. Yeah. Z uh, sorry, Tens coming in through the other side of the map, throws a paranoia. They have a Seize in there. They have a Nana Swarm in there as well. They're using a lot of pressure onto any potential A side anchor. Find you. And maybe I just trying to take that one with a bit of brute force. The util certainly helps with it. Yeah, and that was a uh, yeah. The MIBR okay. classic. Go and get it in the shop now. Yeah. <laughs> what was that doing on it? Yeah, I know. Bad. That's crazy stuff. I think the nade as well, just forcing the send players out into the open. So they do actually have a player advantage here on the eco round. Got themselves in a tidy spot that Sen are gonna have to dig themselves out from. This gun's probably not gonna be retrievable. You can already hear them just being ferried back and away. Dropping spike. They might be are just sitting pretty on A. We're seeing a lot of these Sky Lotus comps either fading out or losing. I suppose fading out being the apt comparison. Here we go, Clash. Bot coming back. Oh, Util in the hands here now. Seeking to swarm it over. Wow, wow the flash actually didn't connect there. That's a sassy. Don't ask me why. For a reason. I'm not too sure either. Now just seeing if they can funnel their way through, but it's a very, very narrow choke point. That's massive. And a lot of weaponry to get through. God, that's so extraordinarily well done by Sen there. It might just look like they're mopping up Ecos, and to be honest, they are. But the way in which they're fighting over the angles, allowing the first player in, swinging back onto the angle to catch the players afterwards, and then backing off as a teammate comes in to pick up the same line. A really nice micro coordination. Yeah, my classic doesn't do that, actually. <laughs> remaining. And the spray from John just to finish it off. So even when you think MIBR have a chance to make something wild happen, it's, it's just not theirs. No. It's really not. A lot of rifles online here for Sen. Clean movement from second. What is that, man? I mean, yes. just understands the angle, even though it's smoked off. Just spraying down. Position that players do like to play. Hello, might be getting a bit overzealous, but it is traded through. Hop in, and that's a bit of disrespect, isn't it? Tens, unlikely contender of the space, but he does eventually take it himself. Yeah, we're getting the sloppiness in here now. Oh, yeah. Send one to finish it out, you can tell. But they found themselves in a 2v2. Health disadvantage. No plant down just yet. They bite. Elsus is low. It's going to be forced wide. Yeah, he's going to go down to it, in fact. Pick your poison in that spot. Shadows the post plant, though, Tens can play this position. He just needs to isolate these flights! A mid drop like flies! Match point. It's not a good day for Brazil. It's really not. Great day if you're a Tens fan. <laughs> but every time MIBR get into a spot where it looks like they should be. You know, I mean, this is so sloppy. It is really sloppy. He's supposed to jump the player through and then remain. swing afterwards, but Sen, cool. they're up so many rounds. They're just letting some of the small things slip and still player quality pushes them over the line. Ridiculous from Tens, very similar. He had a similar clutch, actually, playing the post plant against Lev. Yeah. I mean, Sen against Lev, they were pulling out some wild individual moments. Here's that smoke that we were talking about, by the way. On the attack side for Sen, makes it very difficult for the defenders to fight over oh, this area. Wow. And FRZ tries to swing off turret contact, doesn't realize there are two Sen players pressuring B instead of the more standard one lurker, and they get punished for it. Liberty's being taken entirely by Sentinels. I think you're right. It's the details. Yeah, man. the vibes from Sentinels right now. Oh, We're just being so loosey-goosey. Yeah. You can feel that they want to just try and put a stop to this map. Now, they have called a bit of a pause and a play here into this round after pressuring towards front B. Here's the flash. Oh, does actually catch info onto somebody. That's Zine. I mean, set up wide here. Actually, how much to buy his side. 
Not going to take the fight there. Maybe expecting there to be only one player, but they fall anyway to left to stand and pick up the pieces. Maybe forge something of it for MIBR. Jesus A and Ardazine. You need a miracle. Yeah, I think uh, have a little chat seconds. about Bind at this point. 2v5, 12-3, Sen. Here. I don't see how oh. they lose this one, but it would start with Jay-Z getting the pick. I know it is good for laying and buying a bit of time, but they need way more kills where that came from. And how do they set it up? Flash, connection, Zekken cleared. Three left to stand, and Tens is low, but now with the smoke pops up again, it just gets that much more difficult time working against them, and this is for the map as a reminder here, crumbling beneath them. And it will have to be heroics, but I don't think it's in order. Not for MIBR right now, not for map one. Go focus, set your sights onto Pine, but the Sentinels, they've come straight back into this. As Uber said earlier, with a reckoning here, biblically accurate Sentinels on display. Looking strong here early on, and just in this series. And yeah, they have smited MIBR on map one. And MIBR are just going to have to go back, lick their wounds, try to focus on buying. It was Sen's map pick. They showed us some new stuff on Lotus. It was interesting from that point of view, but not a close map at all. Certainly not here. But MIBR will have to be that full focus on to map two. That was some close moments, don't get me wrong here. Minor details, but making a difference in some of these rounds. But so regular. Yeah. So many of the details going the way of Sen. Didn't really need the hero plays, but tossed a couple in there anyway. Yeah, that player quality just really on full display. Well, we're going to step away, but of course, Uber and the analyst desk are going to be breaking it all down for map number one. So do not go anywhere. You know you don't want to miss it. Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that little thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings. to the ring. 